G'day folks. Well, for this afternoon's little equipment examination, autopsy or possibly repair, we have a dead ABB uh, variable frequency drive. This was donated to me by a fellow subscriber and YouTuber in Sydney. Um, apparently it's short across these two, which it is. I just tested it with a meter and it is dead short. And for, I was hoping it would be short to ground. He didn't say what kind of short. At least not as far as I can remember. I was hoping it'd be short to ground from a minor spike or something, like an MOV's gone short and it's just gone into protection mode. But unfortunately, there's nothing to ground, so it's not a simple fix like replacing a dead MOV. Uh, we're going to get dig deeper into it and just see what got fried. I'd be willing to bet probably the input rectifier or possibly something further along. Maybe one of the IGBTs or something. I'm not too sure how these little plastic case ones work. I've pulled a lot of the bigger ones apart, like the big Danfoss ones, and it generally feeds... There's a filter board. You might get a short on that, but it generally feeds straight into a big three-phase bridge rectifier, and if that thing is fried, yeah, you get a short across two or three phases or everywhere. Two, three phases and to ground. Like when they blow, they blow big. I've even seen some of the big rectifier packs just blown clean off the heatsink and a big carbonised flash burn all around the heatsink. Like some of them blow big, or maybe lightning strike or something like that. So, yeah. We'll open this thing up, look for obvious signs of death, and uh, see about. I would like to fix it, it would come in really handy, especially on a drill press or something like that, or a lathe. Maybe my little South Bend lathe. Uh, yeah, VFDs are just really cool to have when you work with a lot of uh, electric motors because then you can take a three-phase motor that can be wired in 240 volt delta and then um, fed two, 240 volts in three phases, which is exactly what this is designed to do. It will take 415 volt three-phase input and do the same thing with it, but it's dual voltage. So these are quite expensive. It's a rather expensive bit of kit. Anyway, let's open it up and have a look. Okay, I'm gradually getting it apart. The front comes off pretty easy. It's all modular. Everything plugs into headers. So, yeah. I found a mark. It almost looks like a burn under that capacitor there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's related to the black stuff around the neutral wire, but that looks more like a permanent marker. But it looks like there's a burn flash carbon from underneath that capacitor. I want to remove that and investigate. But everything on here is hardwired through header pins. Both sides are soldered together. So, I'm carefully and gradually desoldering them. It's not an easy task, but just tin it, pump it, tin it, pump it, just using your regular spring-loaded solder sucker. I should get a proper solder pump, but that works pretty well. So yeah, got four more to go, and that one there I'll re-tin and re-pump. That one there, I could probably just flick those pins and they'll break free. But yeah, got to be careful not to pull traces off the other side of the board. That would be very unfortunate. Although I think some of these are mainly just tie-ins. Looking underneath with a good light, I can't see any traces going to them apart from the main one on the top. So, I'm not too sure whether or not they're actually connected to anything on the underside. They could just be supports, but I'd say they'll it'd be safer to say they've all got traces on them to treat them very carefully. Alright, well that wasn't too bad. I did have to heat up and tin a couple of spots and just sort of seesaw it off at the end, but apart from that, it came off very easily. Uh, as I suspected, some of them, most of them aren't even connected on this side, like there's trace there and that one's connected to tracing, but the other ones just aren't. They're mostly tie-ins from the other side. I mean, they're connected to tracing on this side, but they're not actually... Like if, if I did tear traces off, like I'd just tear these pads off, but they're not connected to anything on this side, so I wouldn't have to try and bridge a wire to it or anything like that like make a patch up repair. So I'll test this board for shorts first. I'm curious about that carbon burn underneath that capacitor. It just doesn't look like it should be there even though they've done some solder work on here 
I mean, you'd hope they wouldn't use a blowtorch to do it, but who knows? They might have used a little pen torch and just singed it. But yeah, someone's done a bit of a repair on it. They just hardwired essentially. So, next test, get the multimeter and test that board. Okay, well, I can only guess that sooting is from someone using a cigarette lighter on that heat shrink. Because there ain't no short on this board. It's actually in there, so... I'd say this thing's probably junk. But either way, I'll continue pulling it to bits and we'll just have a closer look. There isn't much more to it. It's the only other board in here and it's got all the semiconductors on it, so... Yeah, who knows. Yeah, shouldn't be too hard to get out. Just gotta find my uh, Torx screwdriver and remove it. Okay, well now I've got it out of its box. I found something more interesting than just a minor carbon-like mark. Something wrong with that semiconductor in there. It looks like the front half of it's just being held on by this little spring clip. It's not supposed to be like that. There's also a little burn underneath there. That semiconductor, or no, nah, looks like a surface mount capacitor. Yeah, there's a spray of molten material on the back of the heat sink, and at least one of those semiconductors is completely blown to pieces. God knows what the rest of them is like. Hmm. Might be fairly terminal, or I might be able to fix it. Who knows? I'm going to try and separate those heat sinks. They certainly didn't want people fixing this thing. Don't even know how they put that. Oh, I see. It's probably all flow soldered after all of those components are installed. That's rather nasty. Yeah, that heat sink assembly is all... Uh, it's clipped together, but there aren't any screws to hold these retainers on. It's all spring clip type. So I don't really know how I'm going to go about getting them off. Or at least getting them back on again. I can try and lift the whole heatsink off with all those semiconductors still attached to it, but chances are they probably stuck themselves to the uh, uh, in insulating layer, the uh, backing material. Hmm, it's probably a throwaway job, but who knows? I'll see if I can get it apart without destroying it. If not, this will definitely be an autopsy. <laughs> it won't be working again after that. Okay, well. It's quite a mess in here. There's actually material removed from the heat sink, like something forcibly drew an arc to the heat sink. If I didn't know better, I'd say a spider or something got in there and bridged between this little surface mount and the heat sink and just completely overloaded and fried it. Like it's blown that little power switching MOSFET or whatever it is apart. It's an international rectifier, I see. Uh, I don't know what the condition of the other ones would be like, but uh, the number on that is, the top row is GB15860KD, uh, International Rectifier 328L, followed by 37 and 49 on the bottom of the case. I'd be inclined to replace all of these if I did fix it, but yeah, that one there is the same type but it is completely blown to bits. There's clear arcing over the board and like vaporized material, but that little surface mount capacitor doesn't look like it's actually ruptured or suffered any major damage. So, not too sure on that one. But either way, I made a bit of a mess getting it apart, so I don't know. Ended up scoring that board there, I've broken that trace. But yeah, it wasn't easy getting that apart. I think this one's pretty done for. I don't know. It just looks like something's gotten in there and created a uh, path of very low resistance straight to ground. I'm guessing that's what these heat sinks would be, grounded. So, yeah. We'll leave it at that for now. I'm running out of time at the moment, so hope you'll enjoy that. If anyone's got any ideas on what might be a suitable course of action apart from throwing it out, uh, let me know. I would like to get it running again, but that little uh, semiconductor there is kind of blown to pieces, like big time. 
that thing died a horrible death. Anywho, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.